Welcome back to the Young Shakespeare Podcast. Today I'm joined by Drew Dummer. Drew, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Drew is a Middlebury lacrosse commit, and this past year he played for the Belmont Hill lacrosse team, which at one point was ranked 11 in the nation. So it's pretty insane to have him on. He plays uh, long stick defense, um, and he also is a self-starter. He created uh, Andrew Dummer Photo, which you can find him on Instagram. And uh, so we're going to talk all things about his passion for photography and about uh, his lacrosse game and all that. Um, why, why Middlebury? What did the decision come down to? It's actually funny, like whenever I went into my college search, you know, like um, my freshman, sophomore year, I was like, oh, you know, I want to go to a big school, I want to travel, and you know, the way things played out, I ended up at a small school in Vermont, which is kind of ironic, but um, I wanted the best academic school I could get to, um, and obviously Middlebury is very, uh, very high quality education, so um, I had a couple options, and you know, there were a couple D1s that I was talking to in the fall, um, but none that were really um, of interest, whether it be um, the education or the location or um, whatever. And um, it came down to it in July. I had a few options still open that I was uh, really interested in, and it uh, Middlebury offered, and I went up to see campus, and it's an awesome campus. It's in the middle of nowhere, but it's a... <laughs> It's a really nice campus, nice golf course and mount, ski mountain, and uh, you know I ended up just falling in love with it. And then yeah, within the next week, I told them I was committed. So wow, what was that moment like hearing that they had offered you? It was definitely uh, it's definitely surreal. The coach he um, the the way he kind of does things is you know he is not going to tell you he's offering you unless he wants to, unless he hears you say like you know Middlebury is my number one school. So Ooh. I had to tell him that first. Um, and, the, you know, there was a lot of consideration, like, you know, is Middlebury my number one? Like, do I like this option or this option? And after kind of really sitting down and thinking it all through, I, I was like, yeah, this is definitely the place I want to be at. And so, yeah, I called him up, told him it was my number one, and he said, all right, let's go. So Wow. Yeah, wow. it was pretty cool. And what was it like telling your family? Uh, it was funny. I was uh, by myself in Vermont. I mean, not Vermont, uh, New York. I was at a tournament, and... Um, <laughs> And yeah, I was keeping my, my dad always like checks in when I'm at tournaments. He goes, mm -hmm. you know, who are you talking to? How'd you play? Whatever. And uh, it was funny. I got off the phone, called my dad and I was like, yeah, we just committed. And, you know, he, he knew I was talking with them the whole time and he knew kind of where I was at with different schools. So mm -hmm. um, it wasn't the biggest surprise, but just hearing me like finally like locking it in saying I'm going to Middlebury he was definitely pumped and he was proud my mom couldn't believe it so wow so yeah it was definitely it was a surreal moment it didn't set in for a little bit but now finally is so wow it's pretty special yeah. and um, we were talking earlier you mentioned that the NESCAC is considered basically the best lacrosse as far as D3 goes yeah I'd say so I think it's the, one of the most competitive D3 leagues and you know those who are familiar with lacrosse know that there are a couple uh NESCACs that, you know, compete with D1 teams like Tufts this past spring, uh, beat Dartmouth. Um, wow. Which, you know, they don't, um, not many, not very often D3 teams play D1 teams, but that, um, mm -hmm. I guess it, as a result of COVID, they got a chance to play each other and Tufts ended up winning, which was pretty cool. Um, fun to watch. And so, yeah, it's a really competitive league and I think that because um, of COVID then the next few years I think D3 teams in general are going to be stacked because there are a lot of guys um, at least in my recruiting class who you know in a normal year probably end up being D1 but COVID either held them back like teams in general have less spots now so um, D D1 caliber guys are committing D3 and you know I know a lot of NESCAC commits who are all very very good and could easily play D1 so I think that in the next few years it's going to be really competitive good lacrosse yeah and let's get into that um, as far as the the people that you know that have been involved in committing recently tell me about the guys from your just your grade at Belmont Hill and the grade above you that are playing college across and tell me like the names of the schools they're going to because it's yeah. insane. So a um, lot of commitments in my class recently. Um, so the, uh, the first one in July, well the first one overall was in the fall. Um, that was Charlie Cave. He's going to Brown. Um, 
And then he was the only one throughout the whole school year who had committed, which was kind of crazy. We No one really expected that. And then starting in July, um, my buddy Adam Figler committed to Williams. Ethan O'Neill committed to Tufts. Um, and then I committed to Middlebury soon after that. And Tom Gogan, uh, two days ago, two or three days ago, committed to, uh, to Dartmouth. So... That was my grade. Um, we all kind of flew off the board at the same time. And then the grade above me, uh, Zach Travaglini um, is going to BU. Trey Brown is going to BU with him. Grant Litchfield's going to Lehigh. Um, we got Luke Curtin going to Skidmore. Brooks Raymond going to Colby. Um, Mike Marinello going to St. Lawrence. And that's, I think that's everyone. It's pretty so, insane. Yeah. yeah. And you guys were ranked 11th in the nation at your best, and you finished at about 16th, you said? Yeah. Who yeah. does the rankings? Um, inside lacrosse. Wow. So, okay. Yeah, big That's lacrosse pretty reputable. Team. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Was um, that a lot of pressure? Yeah. Um, I think, so this was the highest that any Belmont Hill team was ranked ever, I think. Mm. So this was one of the best teams, and I think it was really just like, a product of like COVID, everyone was itching to get on the field because um, obviously we missed last year. Um, once we got back out there, you know, we had something to play for. And early in the season, we found out that we could, um, we were considered for the Geico National Tournament, which is wow. um, so that was that was a little bit of pressure, but it was also it was more just like a chip on our shoulder than anything. Um, and we were play- we knew we were playing for that all year, and then, unfortunately we didn't end up going. But um, but yeah, I mean the guys were hungry. Um, I felt it was such a good season just for the for the seniors to go out that way. Um, we had a lot of like we had a really tough schedule this year. Played a lot of good teams like Brunswick, Taft, um, Deerfield, and then we played Sebs three times. Um, so yeah, like it was just. Everyone was itching to get out there, and everyone played their best, and we had a, we had a hell of a season for sure. Yeah, and you know two programs very well, Dover Sherman and Belmont Hill. What's the score this year if the D3 state champs, Dover Sherman, plays Oof. Belmont Hill, an ISL powerhouse? That's a tough question. I have no idea. I really couldn't tell you. If you, if you look at the uh, Boston Lax rankings, um, it had BH at one, and then early in the season it had DS at like 15, but that was before they kind of went on a tear and won the state championship. Mm-hmm. So they definitely, sh- I, I'm not sure what the final ranking was, but they definitely they shot up as down. high as like seven or something. Yeah, seven, that sounds right. After so. the Medfield win, I think they were like seven. So I, mean, yeah. I don't know after the state title, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly have no idea. It's mm-hmm. a tough question. I wish it could happen. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Fantasy game. Yeah. I, I mean, I think the consensus is, from like all the other people I've had on the podcast, is that the ISL is just it's just a different yeah. level. It's a different it is, level yeah. than the MIA competition. Yeah, it's... it's um, when you're at DS, like you hear about like Bailey Laidman, and you're like, wow, like UNC commit. And then once you get to like the club lacrosse level, and... Um, in ISL, you're like surrounded by these guys. So it was really surreal. Like I obviously missed last year. So I was, I was taking a big jump. Like I won a state championship with DS and then I didn't play competitive lacrosse, high school lacrosse for two years before I got back on the field, which was, wow. so it was definitely a Cause big Cause of the competition level? Yeah, super uh, like huge jump in competition. You know, everyone you talk to is committed somewhere. And so, was there a point during the period after you had transitioned over to Belmont Hill where you were you were worried that maybe you'd made the wrong decision when you weren't playing? No, I don't think so. Um, a lot of people think that it was a, strictly about sports is why I switched schools, but it actually um, it wasn't really. I wasn't you know it was more about grades than anything. I needed mm. to step up and um, get my grades up a little bit, and so. That was more my motivation going to Belmont Hill. So um, once I got there, it was a really fun year um, until obviously it got cut short, which sucked. Right. Um, but I was the whole time I was I was glad I made the switch, and you know I ended up in Middlebury, so I can't complain about um, any anything that happened. So 
Yeah, and what did Belmont Hill have to offer as far as helping you get your grades up that DS didn't? Uh, smaller class sizes is a big thing mm-hmm. for me because, um, you know, you at DS you have classes of 20, 25 kids. And mm-hmm. at Belmont Hill, like, my biggest class size is, like, 10 kids. So um, a lot of extra, like, one-on-one um, attention from your teachers. Um, we have... They really utilize like free blocks well, um, so we have a couple free periods throughout the day and getting extra help is pretty easy. Um, and yeah, and also just the motivation, like, you know, remembering why I switched schools is, was a big thing for mm-hmm. me. Like I definitely stepped up, started, wanted to be a little less lazy than I was and so yeah, yeah a mixture of all that. Right, and it sounds like you put yourself in a good place because Middlebury is a super um, good reputation for their mm-hmm. academics and what they bring to the table. So yeah. it sounds like overall it was a great yeah, decision yeah. for you. It was definitely the right decision <clears throat> for me. What do you think the biggest misconception about your dumber is? Oof, that's a good question. God, I have to think about that. Um, what is the biggest misconception about me? Can I take a few minutes to think yeah, about that one? Yeah, we can circle back to it. Yeah, we'll circle back. I, uh, I hit people with that every interview. It's my favorite question to ask because it usually curtails into a deeper discussion, um, but it also can be a daunting question because yeah. it's very it's very broad and a tad open-ended. What do you think the biggest uh, misconception about Belmont Hill is from uh, the outside? Uh, probably that the kids are like stuck up. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big when you when you see it from outside. I think schools like Belmont Hill and Saint Sebs, like you're going to the all boys school, you're wearing a shirt and tie to school. I think like went from like an outside perspective, and even myself, um, like you definitely view it as like oh those kids are you know pretty stuck up. But once you get there, like those the kids are so awesome. Um, yeah, and some of my best friends, and they're all great kids and. So yeah, that, I think that's the biggest misconception is they're not really that stuck up. They're really yeah. down to earth guys. So yeah, and you were on the DS team that won in twenty nineteen. Yeah, and you would have been a sophomore. Is I was that right? A sophomore then. Yeah. Did you get? Did you start? You started in that game. State yeah, yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. What was that experience like? Winning a state championship at DS. That was pretty absurd. Um, it was a bummer because that year we didn't get to play at BU. Um, the year before we played at BU and we ended up losing to Cohasset. Um, but that was one of the next year was more one of those like storybook seasons because mm. we had lost to Cohasset, which was a pretty tough loss just because you know anytime you lose in a state championship game is pretty devastating. But uh, but we came back the next year and we went on a tear and that playoff run was awesome and then. Um, we actually played Cohasset again in the semifinals, and we we handed it to them, which was awesome. Like mm. they were uh, they were definitely a powerhouse, and you know we came in and we played our game and we kind of steamrolled them. So that was awesome. And then we ended up at the state championship and beat Grafton, and so yeah, I mean in front of everyone too. It was close to home, and mm. yeah, it was pretty it was pretty electric. And hadn't Grafton got you guys a few years before? Uh, maybe a few years before, not when I was there. Okay, uh, yeah. We beat the, because we beat Grafton in the state semis the year before that to get right. to the state championship. So. Yeah, and it's funny how in D3 a few names keep coming up. Grafton, Cohasset, yeah. you know, you kind of get Yeah, it's them. usually the same teams, but um, <coughs> I was surprised to see like Newburyport and Norwell in this year's state championship run just because I, I had never played against mm. uh I may have played against Norwell, I can't remember, but definitely not in the playoffs. Right. Did you get a chance to photograph um, Norwell in the state championship? Uh, no, I was up in the stands for that one. Oh, yeah. I was, I was leading the fan zone. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you say that was exciting for you, or was it at all bittersweet? That it, was, it, was it was bittersweet. It was kind of your friends. I was more yeah. happy for, like, I would have given up anything to be out there, um, mm-hmm. play with them, because it's just so hot shit, awesome mm-hmm. watching them uh, win it again. Especially after COVID, it's like, and on the home turf, that was pretty sick. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, I wanted to get out there, and it was bittersweet, but I was also so happy for them. Right. They probably know I was their biggest fan that whole run, and I was rooting for them, and yeah, I tried to make it to every game I could. Everyone could hear me up in the fan zone, Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, is there a comparable sort of title that you can win at Belmont Hill? Is it a big ISL game? Yeah, ISL champion. Okay. Um, So, up until two years ago, the year that COVID hit, um... They had never done playoffs. It was just they crowned champion by best record. Um, mm-hmm. But they were going to start a four-team playoff. Um, but obviously COVID hit, so that didn't happen. And then this year, it was kind of like a they threw a season together. It wasn't an official season. So like even though we went undefeated in the ISL um, and we finished first, but like we did, we technically didn't get an ISL championship because um, they didn't name a champion this year. But I think next year there should be playoffs. 14 playoffs so wow and is it just one game uh in each round yeah one game each okay. round i was yeah pretty high yeah pretty high stakes one game yeah. right That's yeah but it's so like because it was kind of like it's kind of anticlimactic like belma hill could beat bb and n who's one of the not so great teams in the isl oh, and cool clinch, the, the, title, clinch yeah. the title by beating them so it's like yeah we just won but you know there's part of like playing a better team and getting, you know, high level competition to win the game. Yeah, where did you guys finish um, during your sophomore year at Belmont Hill? Uh, well, we didn't have a season that year. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So that was that was the weird part about it because I went and I repeated to get an extra season, and I never ended up getting that extra oh, season. Oh, brutal. Yeah. Yeah, but certainly you've probably developed with the extra year, you yeah. know, coming into your senior year and yeah. all. Is there a goal that the team has? For this year? Mm-hmm. Just win another championship. There, We're going to have some big shoes to fill with some of those guys that left and just knowing kind of what we accomplished this season, there's going to be some pressure to kind of do the same <coughs> thing, same thing this coming year. But um, I think us as, senior, us as rising seniors kind of – Think about how sick that was for um, for the current seniors or the just graduated seniors, and we kind of want to recreate it again. So, yeah. yeah, just try and stay on par with last year's team. So we touched on earlier that you have a photography business. Yeah. How'd you get involved in photography? Um, so I've, it's always been an interest of mine. My dad has always been into it. My uncle's been into it, and uh, I always had a camera, um, and I would just shoot for fun, and then. Uh, DS was at field um, the Thanksgiving game in what was that 2019 I think um, I ended up shooting that game and the pictures turned out really good and I um, people it was a hit people started coming back for more I shot a lot of basketball games that winter and then it kind of took off from there and yeah mm-hmm. what's your favorite sport to shoot uh that's such a good question because I like all of them. Basketball, I shoot the most of, um, but I don't think I I can't remember how many lacrosse games I've shot. I think maybe just one or two. Mm. And I wish I shot more lacrosse because that's very. Are fun. you busy? Is it because you're playing that you can't really get to those? Yeah, well, I'm playing. So yeah, actually, I shot a lot more lacrosse games. A couple DS ones mm. and. Uh, yeah, I, I've shot more than I realized, but it was really cool to shoot spring football this year because um, obviously there wasn't a football season in the fall, so they moved it to the spring, and um, I wasn't really playing a sport at the time because it was like it was like February to March is when they had the season, um, so I had nothing to do. So it was definitely cool to get out there and shoot football games. I was pumped about that, and um, and yeah, so I like all of them, but. I would say pro- my favorite is probably football, mm-hmm. but but yeah. Yeah. What do you think makes a good photographer? Ooh. Um, I think one thing is knowing how to like display your photos. So like shooting the photos is one thing, but like people don't realize like the kind of beh- behind the scenes work is just as much kind of creativity as the actual photo. Um, you know, like editing and mm. um, how you post it and, you know, um, putting it out there for everyone to see. I think that's um, 
if you have a good social media page, I know like some of my favorite photographers are the ones that have a really like attractive social media. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's a big part of it. Sometimes it's not even the photos that are like, it's what you do with them. Interesting. Yeah. Right. And is it, is a lot of it like when you first started or maybe even now learning like what aperture and like how to shoot at different yeah, know, rates I mean, and stuff like um, that? Yeah. I always fidget with my settings and going from like an indoor basketball game to an outdoor football game to a concert indoors with low light, like you definitely get a feel for, um, what, what settings you're using and what situations. And mm-hmm. so I've definitely learned a lot from that, but yeah, that's, that's a lot of it. Um, and do you hope to make a career out of it or do you think it's a side hustle? That's a good question. Cause I never know, you know, like where, where the ceiling is with it, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Like, I don't know. Uh, like I mentioned earlier that like my goal is to start uh, shooting high profile games you know hopefully professional games and um, and concerts too which I got to do fortunately um, two winters ago Um, but I don't know it's always gonna be at least a hobby Um, I'm always gonna be doing it but if I can make a career out of it that would be pretty cool so for sure and what camera are you currently shooting with a Canon 90D (coughs) yeah And what makes that the right camera for you? Uh, High quality, 32 megapixels, which was like a huge step up from my last camera. It was like almost double the resolution. So Mm. it was so cool stepping up from like a kind of a lower quality camera to a higher quality one. That was a, it's so fun just like looking at the pictures I'm able to take. Yeah. Seeing my own work is pretty cool. So now if you see another photographer's work, do you have a rough idea of what they're shooting with like would you be like oh this is a higher resolution versus lower oh resolution? usually by the quality you can tell but i would never know like oh the, oh it's the canon yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i would never know that but but yeah like you can tell the quality of the camera mm-hmm. just by looking at the picture so yeah and where where are the business opportunities in this would you ever, do you think it's always sports related or would you do weddings or well, something like that? Well, I've done some senior pictures. Um, I do a lot of real estate too, um, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, I like doing real estate a lot and, uh, I, I always wanted to, I have a drone too. So that's, um, shooting properties with drones is very fun. Um, I just wanted to get down to like, I haven't done any properties like on the Cape or the Vineyard yet, but I want to, um, just cause they have some really cool houses down there. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's more business. And then, um, I shot the Belmont Hill prom. Um, nice. So prom, senior pictures, real estate. Were you a part of the prom and taking pictures? No, I was just seniors this year. So oh, I all right. Prom. Well, you got, at least you got a taste of it, I yeah, guess. Yeah. Yeah. So I know it's to come next year, but right. But yeah, so I've definitely had, it's not just sports related, but. And one know. of the cool things is the concert you shot. You told me that was one of your favorite artists. Yeah. Um, artist that I've known for a while, which was so surreal. Like just, um, basically I spent months and months just trying sending out emails to every artist I could think of, like their managers and their publicists and people on their teams. And, um, and then one day I got a response from, so it was G Herbo, who was the rapper I shot for pretty famous rapper. Um, and I got a response and said, yeah, we're going to be in Worcester. Um, in at late February and um, yeah, come shoot it. We'll get you a media pass. And you know, I didn't ask for money or anything. I just was thankful for the opportunity. And then mm-hmm. I got there, and it was really cool because like the stage was here, and you got a, the wall holding off all the fans. And then there's a gap in between, and I was in the gap, so I was like literally closer to the stage than anybody else was. Wow. And, and um, yeah, some of the videos I I posted on Instagram, like I'm. Um, He's standing right at the front of the stage, and I'm just like right under him, pointing my camera at him. So it was, it was really surreal. Like that was a really cool moment. That's insane. And there's a lot of good athletes at Belmont Hill. You were telling me some of your buddies that are now playing big time ACC football. Yeah. So um, a lot of football is big. Um, one of my best friends, Harry Lodge, right now is um, talking to schools. Um, he's 
talking to a bunch of D1 schools and a couple, um, I have a buddy who's talking to a couple D1 schools, Mike Lahonen. He's talking to D1 and D3. He just got an offer from Middlebury actually, which nice. is pretty cool. And then a um, couple of guys, um, well, Jalen Bailey is a BC football player. He left, he graduated before I got there, but I got to know him. I shot pictures for him before. And um, Greg DeRosiers was one of my good friends when I was a sophomore. He's playing at Louisville. Um, Isaiah Gomes, he uh, he's at Cornell. Um, so yeah, a lot of high profile guys. Wow, is is Belmont Hill a football powerhouse as well? Uh, in past years, they've been um, they've won ISL championships. <clears throat> um, they've won NEPSAC championships. Um, so yeah, they they've always been a pretty. Um, High level school. Yeah, and what is the ISL? I assume lacrosse is the biggest sport. Is that right? Uh, that's a good question. I know there are a lot of good, um, a lot of good football players. Hockey. Um, a lot of good hockey players, okay. and then I don't think it's as big for basketball, but there are definitely a lot of um, <coughs> big basketball kids there. Um, yeah. It's actually, uh, yeah, I would say lacrosse, hockey, and football are probably the biggest sports. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, besides photography, is there an, you know, an aspiration that you have as far as career, like going into college? I know it's, it's, it's far off, but maybe do you know if you want to be business or uh, I've humanities? Always, I've always wanted to get into private equity. I think that's a really cool concept and, you know, um, people that are successful at it are very well off so that's another motivation (laughs) Um, yeah um but yeah i always thought that was really cool and you know i watch a lot of shark tank too and i just very fascinating to me the whole business perspective and you know seeing what an investor's looking at and kind of what they choose to invest in choose what not to invest in and i think uh that's a really cool business and that's definitely something i want to get into Wow. Who's your favorite shark? Oof. I think Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> yeah, he tells it how it is. Yeah, so. he keeps it real. Yeah, he keeps it very real, so he's fun to watch. One fun thing that I heard about behind the scenes is that, uh, like, it was Mark Cuban saying, like, so a certain percentage of the deals they do, like, they're like agree to something on camera, yeah. But it's not actually binding. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So they have to like go off camera because like he says like twenty percent of the time, they'll be like whether they, like the they have to like look through all the paperwork because sometimes like the numbers they gave won't be like legitimate, or some crap like, like the person who owns the business isn't paying their taxes or yeah. something. And Mark Cuban's like, well, who are they gonna go after, you or me, when I make the business deal? You know, the, the fact that this guy owes, like, all yeah. these back taxes and stuff like that. Yeah. So, like, it's funny to see, like, sometimes there's on television and then behind the scenes, it just doesn't, like, work. Yeah. I don't think, I don't I know if they publish those. Too. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Is that crazy? Well, it'd be crazy if you had a show and there's never a deal made. Just. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I heard that, like, only, like, a small percentage of the deals actually go through, which was, I thought was fascinating. Mm-hmm. And one of the big things that they have to consider when investing is like the the Shark Tank bump, right? Because yeah. any product getting advertised exactly. on the show is immediately people at home are like, oh, like that's cool. Like, yeah. I'm interested in that. I'm going to go buy that. Yeah. So just by having it on the show or even making a deal too, and then they have yeah. their social media to go promote it. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, no, that's, I, I always, I always get um, bummed watching that show because I always see ideas that I'm like, wow, I could have thought of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like how, anyone, yeah. How cool would it be to just like think of your own product and get it on Shark Tank? Even if you don't make a deal, that'd still be pretty sick. There was, yeah. a, there was a person from, um, from DS who was on Shark Tank. Oh, yeah, I think I heard about that. What was the product? Was it? I want to say it was the Life Straw. You know the, uh, the straw that you can... Uh, like stick into like a bot- any body of water and it'll cleanse it for you. Oh no way! Okay, I think I it was. That. I could be wrong about that. I definitely but... know what you're talking about. I think it was. Yeah. A, it was a girl, right? Yeah, it was two girls. I think they they graduated in like oh nine or something. Yeah, I was gonna say it was six. They were probably around that time. Yeah. yeah, I think one of them might have come back and spoke 
at like one of the days it was like not a career day you wouldn't call it but it was something like that it was yeah. sort of like weird not weird but a, a day when we were like organizing to going to different events and stuff with different yeah. guest speakers um and that was cool i remember i i'm not describing the day well but there was an event you could sign up for different events um about like careers and stuff and i went to this one where it was this woman that was doing these huge like multi-billion dollar deals she was like working at like apple or google or something and then she realized like she was a ds grad she realized that she'd been too caught up in like the corporate world and that her sense of like reality was weird so she went and started donating like her time and like doing charity work in africa like just quit her job went and she was working with special needs kids in Africa. And I thought that was so cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Just just going and off and completely like making all this money and deciding like, no, like this this will be the route for me. Yeah. Do you um I was gonna say going back to your DF football days, you were a wide receiver, is that right? Yeah I was. I mm-hmm. played quarterback in middle school but Oh yeah I, you did. Yeah once I got to high school I switched over to receiver. That's the thing is there's a lot of good quarterbacks. Like yeah. You would have had to compete with Kirby Ryan. Kirby, um, Holden Ferrari, when I was a freshman, he was playing quarterback. So, um, yeah, I went in assuming I would play quarterback. And then, um, obviously, Holden was there. And um, Coach Ryan said that uh, he wide receiver was the best way to get on the field and so yeah and what's yeah. interesting is you did get on the field as like a freshman yeah, right yeah i and ended up starting big time yeah you started as a freshman yeah um that's gotta be so i can't rare. remember if i was starting early in the season but definitely by the end of the season i was starting um and and yeah so that's pretty that rare a lot of fun because i'm like i'm trying to think like when i was a freshman Tyler Mendes got on like special teams. Yeah. He didn't even start. Um, Lewis Hansen the next yeah. year got timed by the end of the year. And as we know, he's at Michigan. Yeah. Brady Russo started as a freshman. Like the short list of people yeah. is a short list that yeah. got to start as freshmen. Yeah, I think that um, the teams uh, like before my time when I was in middle school watching them, those were really talented teams. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, like teams when Tyler was a freshman, um, that was a that was a pretty uh, legit team. So not to, not to say that our team wasn't, but yeah, I, it would have been hard yeah, to compete, I'd say, compete for anyone mm-hmm. on, on some of those teams. Yeah, because my freshman year with Tyler, like that was like the running back was like John Hargraves. So for yeah, him to start and then crazy. Um, I remember when Dante was there. Remember mm. Dante? Oh yeah, he would have gotten time yeah, as a freshman he, for sure. Yeah, he did get time as a freshman, I think, and did then he, he ended up moving. I think he's in like Iowa or something. Yeah, somewhere yeah. in Iowa, right? And I yeah, don't. He I, was just, a real good I think athlete. he's playing college hoops somewhere. If I'm not, I someone think, told me he dropped fifty in a game. Wow. Yeah, so that's he's insane. A, I mean, he's a freak athlete. So I wish he uh, st- stuck around a little longer, but I didn't get to watch him too much, but. Yeah, this is kind of the thing. Guys like you that are, you know, talented lacrosse or football players or what have you, people sometimes at DS will count off the big, like, like, imagine the team we could have. Like, think about lacrosse. Yeah, right? we, we actually thought a lot about that because, I don't know, we were, like, just thinking, like, because also um, Mike Marinello, Sherburn kid. Mm-hmm. Um, Theo Kostakis. Theo Kostakis, um, Charlie Alfieri. So we... Um, we definitely were wondering like how that team would have been now, and obviously they won a state championship, so they didn't need us anyway. But uh, and then like football, dude, yeah. you, Liam Peck, yeah. Lewis Hansen, Noah Canty, Noah um, Canty for sure, yeah. Cole Canty, yeah. So definitely a lot of talent. And yeah, we're actually thinking about, or I've been trying to organize an alumni lacrosse game for all the guys that either graduated or left and mm-hmm. trying to get us all together. At Bell scrimmage. Hill or DS? No, at DS. Oh. Um, so, yeah. Getting guys wow. like him, Raycroft, Henry, Kenny. Uh, oh, that'd be so much fun, I think. Me, Mike, Theo. I don't know if you know Jack Pastore. Yep, um, yep. So all the guys that pretty Is much... Is Wyatt his brother? 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. And he was a freshman that was scoring some goals. Yeah. He play, he got some decent minutes in the games that I watched, so that was pretty cool. When would this game happen? The summer or the spring? Uh, I've been trying to get it for some point in the next few weeks. Um, I pretty much got rosters right now, and and yeah, just we really just have to figure out when we're going to play. Wow. How many people do you think are going to be involved? Um, I would say they're at... I'd probably say there are 12 kids a roster, which, like, I'm trying to get a few more because we need some subs, but... Yeah. But, yeah. Um, Do you, are you going to have current DS team. players, too? Yeah. Like, uh, just alumni versus current kids? No, it would just be a mix of... So, basically, the, the kids that were in my grade at DS, the 21s, just graduated, so mm -hmm. they're alumni now, even though they pretty much just finished up their, their season. So, um, it would be anyone that great and above dang yeah wow that's an exciting idea i like yeah. that is that hard to organize not really i mean we still have old team group chats and stuff uh, yeah. that we don't really use anymore and i just sent a few texts and some of those and said <clears throat> who would be around to play and got some good responses so mm -hmm. what's the oldest like the the, the oldest cs grad it that would be, be um so you were class of 19 yeah be class of 18 Okay. So like Jack Dylan, Johnny Gaudreau. Are you open to having people that are like 17, 16, 15? I would definitely be open to that, but uh, I just, I mean, the problem is I don't know as many of those kids, mm -hmm. and I was talking to some, like I was talking to Eric Need about it a little bit, and he said he doesn't know as many of them either, so mm -hmm. I figured maybe not, but I would definitely be open to it, especially because the more guys we get, the better. And yeah, I can give you Mark Seisler's contact, do you yeah, remember him? Yeah. So he would have been 2014 um, or 15. And Zach Gustafson. Zach Gustafson. Yeah, I don't know him as well, but yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure someone, I see him Cam Raycroft would definitely have his number. Yeah. Um, but I can get you Sizler because he's coming on the podcast soon. Oh, okay. He's super, he's doing cool sleep research science stuff, so I don't know if he oh, would really have any time to play, but I'm sure he could do the same thing yeah. and throw it in a group chat. Hey, there's going to be some of those guys, They're, uh... They're getting old, so <laughs> probably been years since they thrown on the cross pads, but I'm sure they'd be down sure, too. Dude. Yeah, yeah. That's the hard thing. Is everyone's got to strap up the cleats one day, yeah, right? Exactly. Do you think you're gonna ever coach? Should be open to that. Uh, I'd be open to it. It's not really my plans right now, but I would definitely, at least maybe when my kids play, um, maybe I'll help coach out those teams because that'd be pretty cool. But but yeah, like. Uh, like Coach Carini, he was on the podcast, and yeah, um, he still suits up sometimes. So <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, when in practices, he'll he'll suit up and take shots. So, do you ever feel like you are are you appreciative that you have a whole other year now, or is there any sense of like, man, I feel a little bit old for high school. I'd like to be moving on, being more independent. No, it's not really that. I think. Um, well, I think repeating was the, probably one of the best decisions I've made just because mm -hmm. it helped me in my college search and gave me an extra year of lacrosse to talk to coaches and stuff. Um, it's definitely a little weird seeing all my buddies going off to college in the next few weeks and I'm still sticking around. Um, but yeah, I never, I never regretted it, but it is definitely a little weird like mm -hmm. just seeing everyone leave and I'm still the only one here. Yeah. So. Where is Belmont Hill? It's in Belmont near Cambridge. And, mm -hmm. uh, How many people, what percentage of the people like are boarding there versus just driving? Not many. There are okay. a couple boarders, but I would say... You, you drive in? Yeah. Okay. How far is it? Is it a long It's like 25, 30 minutes. Okay. It's not, it's not terrible. Yeah. But is the traffic, bro, in the morning? It wasn't, it wasn't um, bad this year mm -hmm. just because nobody was really driving or commuting um, yeah but I think it'll def it's definitely been picking up again so I think mm. it'll be yeah I think it'll be tough this year brutal. the pike or what uh, I take 95 okay yeah. yeah yeah the pike I've been having a lot of fun just going into like Cambridge and Boston I've been having a lot of fun on the pike yeah. with just the crazy drivers yeah. bro it's a it's a it's the wild west yeah oh my god don't even get, don't even get me started yeah, dude. Massachusetts. I mean, you said you were in New York for a tournament. That's yeah. probably the only other place where the people drive. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's Being like, through the city is unbelievable. I don't know how people do that on a regular basis. <laughs> Brett Stark, who was just on the podcast, um, told me on the podcast that when he was in New York, he saw a woman just, like, get hit by a car. 
No. Way. And she just got up and was like, "I'm all right." <laughs> what? What happened? Oh my god! It's uh, absolutely nuts. Do you think you want to stay around here after you, you know, you grow up and get old, or do you think you'll be in New that's, York? Or do you think you'll be down south? Like you have That's such a good question. I think um, I don't know how to answer that because I I think it'll be nice to be close to home, but also at the same time, I definitely want to. I don't know if I want to live in the Northeast all my life. Mm-hmm. So, I know my dad was talking about like when when he was having first started having kids, like talked about living in the Chicago area, which I think mm-hmm. would be really cool. I think living anywhere in California would be really cool. It's it's uh, expensive living out there, but um, down in Florida would be sick. So, I don't know. I want to definitely keep my options open. For yeah, I can find a good place to live, but. There are a lot of options for sure. What do you think it, out of these three, what's the best? The Cape, the Vineyard, and Nantucket? I've never been to the Vineyard or Nantucket. Really? That's a fun fact, yeah. I go to the Cape a lot, um, and I just can't believe I've never been to the, uh, to the Vineyard or Nantucket. Yeah. I um, mean, they, they, it weird. does make sense. Like, there wouldn't probably be a great reason to go. I've never been to the Vineyard. Yeah, like, I don't know. So I say that to some people, and they think I'm crazy. Like, how can you live in Massachusetts and not be not have seen either? But, um... Uh, but yeah, I spend a lot of time on the Cape. I have a lot of buddies who live or have houses down there, and so yeah, I, up, I was there yesterday. I've been there a couple times. Usually, spend my Fourth of July in the Cape. So, were you in the Boston Lax All Star Game? I was not. No. Okay. Did you shoot that then? Uh, I wasn't home for that actually. Oh, okay. I think I I might have been in a tournament. I forget where I was, but I wasn't home that um, that day. Mm-hmm. So yeah, no, I didn't get to play in that unfortunately, but I have a lot of buddies that did. So yeah, do you ever network with people like Flano? Yeah, I'm actually good. Um, I'm, I've gotten pretty close with Flano. Just um, I see him around at every game that I go to shoot. He's yeah. also there. He also came to shoot um, a Belmont Hill game when we played Deerfield. Um, so I see him around all the time. Um, we're connected on like social media and stuff too so yeah, yeah he's a good dude yeah, honestly he's good willing dude. to help out anyone he's a great resource for guys like me making a sports podcast or guys like you just wanting to figure out how to get your foot in the door at bigger venues yeah. and stuff like that because he's seen a lot of it and he's obviously growing his profile extremely quickly yeah which is uh, very impressive is there anyone else that you network with that's in photography or anything like that uh not really, to be honest. I think most of the stuff I do is by myself. You know, there are some guys that I like connect with on social media, but not really like, I don't really network with them. Um, but yeah, I stay in touch with some people, but, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Who was your favorite teacher at DS? Oh God, I gotta think back. Um, I would say I liked, I liked Mr. Sweeney a lot. I thought his uh, oh, TV yeah. media teacher. He subscribed. Really? Yeah. I don't know if he'll be forty minutes, forty five minutes into watching this interview. But Hopefully, he watches. If he is, if he is watching, he probably doesn't even remember who I am at this point. But I liked his class a lot. I thought he was a good guy, and yeah, Mr. Sweeney. He's Shout out, Mr. Favorite. Sweeney, a yeah. loyal subscriber. Hopefully, he comes across this. Yeah. Right. <laughs> clip it. Make it to an interview <laughs> clip with his name in the title. Yeah. Do you hate Medfield? Oh yeah, I hate Medfield. <laughs> oh my god, don't even get me started. Why do you hate Medfield? <laughs> I don't know. Probably shouldn't say. <laughs> no, I just, uh, that's a good rivalry right there. And I, I liked uh, in the spring going to watch the DS Medfield football game. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. And then the lacrosse game soon after. So, yeah. That's There's crazy. always been that rivalry. And I just like feeding into it. Yeah, right. Yeah. I think the, the rivalry definitely helps people elevate. Yeah. Maybe not character-wise, but... Oh, yeah, definitely not. Yeah. Sports, sports-wise sports definitely helps people get to that, um, get to the next level. What's Belmont Hill's biggest rival? Is there is there a rivalry game? St. Sebastian's. Easily. Really? Do you yeah. hate St. Seb's? Oh, yeah. Who's worse, Medfield it's, or St. Seb's? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I, I kind of got to go with St. Seb's, but yeah, um, it's actually funny because um, there's a big rivalry there, and but I play Massachusetts, and a lot of the buddies on my team are like are St. Seb's guys. 
Wow. So it's funny, like when I'm playing some of the lacrosse with them, it's like we're buddies, but you know, once we step out on the field and I'm in a BH uniform and they're in a Sebs uniform, it's like no friends on the field. So, right. Yeah, there's yeah. still that rivalry there, um, which is good because like you can see them, you know, you can see them on the beach in the Cape in the summer and you'll be buddies with them, but then, you know, once you get out there, it's like, wow. What makes a good defender in lacrosse? Uh, someone who's physical, um, but also like, you know, quick on their, f- I, I've been told like I, I have a pretty good, um, body type because, you know, I'm big enough where I can be physical, but I'm also small enough that I can stick with the smaller guys. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm like 5'11", so that's kind of like, I'm 5'11", like 195, so that's like a good right. size where, um, you can stay physical, um, handle playing with the big guys and then the little guys I can run with them and so yeah I think that's just being versatile what's your advice to a kid that's watching and they want to play college lacrosse like you uh never say never um I going into my freshman year I don't think I ever really expected to play college lacrosse I told I told coach Carini this I um Basically, I started playing lacrosse because all of my uh, all of my friends did. You know, I was a football guy and basketball guy, and um, and then here I am, my going into my senior year, and I don't play football or basketball anymore, and I'm committed for lacrosse. So it's really it's really crazy how like I kind of just picked it up because my friends did, and Coach Greeny put a pole in my hands. I was a I was a midi, and he gave me a long stick and said, "Play with this." and it ended up working out for me clearly so um so yeah I, i'd say pretty much expect the unexpected never say never um i think just uh work it work at everything work for your goals and you know i had to i had to go through a lot to kind of get to the middlebury um at, like switching schools picking up club lacrosse late and spending a lot of time talking to coaches and stuff and getting your grades up. So there's definitely a lot of steps, but it all pays off in the end. Awesome. On that note, Drew, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. Uh, Where can people find you on social media? Um, My personal Instagram is uh, DrewDummer1, um, and my photo Instagram is AndrewDummerPhoto.com. So awesome. Uh, go check those out and then please like and subscribe to the Young Shakespeare podcast and tune in for the next episode. Thank you.